Hey there, thank you for joining me. This is Tom Christie at d20play.com and today I'm going to do a DM tips video for Candlekeep Mysteries 1, The Joy of Extra Dimensional Spaces. This was a really fun adventure to run. I think it'd be a really fun starting adventure for any campaign. I hope you have your hands on Candlekeep Mysteries because it looks like a pretty cool hardcover. Okay, so first off, spoilers. If you're a player, please stop here. If you're a player looking for a game online, though, check out my video, I Want to Try D&D, which I will link above and below. And uh, it's really easy to find a D&D game online nowadays with these virtual weekends happening. So I encourage you to go check that out. Now, if you are already played it or you're prepping it, let's continue. The Joy of Extra Dimensional Spaces is a Forgotten Realms adventure. And if it's played in Adventurer's League, it's in the Masters campaign. I'll put a link to Adventurer's League's info below. It's a level one adventure. The page references are from the book version. The author of the book, Michael Polkinghorne, he is a geologist, or was a geologist, and now he works in the wine industry. He's got four house cats. That uh, might foreshadow something below. Uh, the maps included with the maps or included with the adventure are the black and white maps and for my first run I used maps by one of the virtual weekend DMs. Uh, great detail. They also added a map of the study so that was very handy. For future runs I will use maps by Heroic Maps. Their full color and detailed maps are amazing. They have added the study, the attic, and the grassy knoll and also a roof map and they also have a resource pack full of inspiration. I'll put a link to that above and below. Here's a preview to it in Drive Through RPG in the DM Guild page. Just amazing looking maps there. For music, um, it says in the adventure that the mansion is eerily quiet. So the music I used was Existential Dread by Tabletop Audio, which I have playing now in the background. I'll turn it up here for a second or two. Sorry if that was too loud, but really good, eerie music to have for this adventure. For inspiration, the Virtual Weekend DMs, uh, they share play ideas, they share experiences. Great group of people to be with. Uh, if you haven't already, check out Running for Them. Uh, I think uh, you'll sign up through the Adventures League page I put below as well. And um, also, there's more great inspiration in the Heroic Maps resources pack that they are selling with their maps knowledge. So I like to share knowledge with the players ahead of time so that they can share it organically through their characters during the adventure. So for someone with Arcana skill and um, maybe maybe also religion skill, I would note for them that the flames in Candlekeep are suppressed so that uh, any spell that creates fire is wasted if it's cast in the keep. I would not not extend that to this adventure inside the mansion part of this adventure though. Um, if someone has Arcana and is a sage, I would add the information on page 14 about the uh, the extra dimensional spaces and the rules that go with those in Candle Keep. And once again, if someone has Arcana and is a wizard, maybe just if they have Arcana, I'd share the information on page 21 about homunculi and also the information that happens a couple pages later um, in room 17 when they first find like the half created homunculi and that's on page 24. Okay, and I'll put a link to all that info or I'll put all that info below in the description. Okay, encounter, encounters in the uh, room. So here's the gorgeous maps uh, by um, Heroic Maps. Let me send this one in the back real quick. You can see what I've done. What I've done here. So they have their study map, and the players will come here. They'll be looking through the books. They'll find the uh, Joy of Extra Dimensional Spaces book. Hopefully, decipher it so that they can find the doorway. If not, of course, the the sages here in Kendall Keep can help them with that. But once you have that, if you put these maps back to back, you can just send this one to a different layer or send to the back, and boom, the magic door appears there for the players. All right, then here's the maps of the mansion itself. I have everyone but the roof map. I don't think I'll need the roof map, um, but these are just fantastic detail. You can see how gorgeous these maps are. 
All right. The players will start out coming in through the doors here, and they will see right away the Sage Mateus, who they're looking for. He's been stuck in here, uh, trying to get out for the last half hour, hour, hour and a half. He's excited to see the players. They can share with them why they're here, and um, and he will then offer to help them. He can go do, do some studying, but he'd like also to have the mansion explored, and maybe they're better at doing that than he is, so as a reward for helping them, they could explore the mansion, he suggests. So here I try to make the players comfortable coming and going through the mansion with the fact that he can open the doors for them, and then they'll go off exploring. So when they go off exploring and then they're like kind of engaged a little ways away from the door, that's when I drop the, the shriek and the door is shutting. So they don't have the feeling, oh, well, we were chipped. We could have just jumped right through those doors. You know, just want to make sure that they don't feel at all um, like they were cheated in that regard. Okay, so then let's look at the library here. So this is another gorgeous room here. Stacks and stacks of books everywhere. They have a kind of a new mechanic, or maybe it's new to me, the false object mechanic. It used to be that it just appeared if it was motionless to be what it was or what it was pretending to be. Now they give a mechanic where a person can perceive it to be something else. And before, if it started combat, it'd be pretty much automatic surprise. Now if it starts combat, it just has advantage on initiative. So I kind of ran it the old way when I did this. The players, players were up in here, characters were searching around. I had those books animate and then knock over a bookshelf on the surprise round and then combat started. And that worked pretty well. And this was pretty balanced. It kind of took him a little bit to defeat these books, so I wouldn't beef that up any. If you had to, though, you could add more stacks of animated books into that room pretty quick and easy. Okay, then we come into the study with the wall-to-wall -wall bookshelf in the back and the cat in the chair. So these cats are just, uh, they were great fun for the players I had. So any players that love cats, um, I think we get a kick out of these guys. I would definitely add tokens for the cats and I would give the players control of the tokens if they befriend the cats. My players, when I ran this, were like having the cats follow them around and having the cats jump up on counters and doing all sorts of cat things, making them trip hazards, etc. Um, and the cat names I used were Sooty, Smokey, Ebony, and Shardolin. And Shardolin, turns out, is missing. Why is he missing? Because of the mimic. So the cats, if the players kind of can talk to animals, they could find out there should be four cats, and they see there are no cats. The cats can share the things they like to do, and of course one of the things they like to do is lie in the sun, and uh, one of their favorite places to do that is in the chairs in the dining room. And when the party goes to look, there's no cats around, but maybe if they search carefully, they'll see some fur where Chardolin was before he was eaten. All right, then we go into the kitchen here. Remind the players of their homunculi knowledge, their character's knowledge, if they don't remember. Uh, I put an info on the map here about the aroma that they can smell in the kitchen. There's aroma also for the flowers coming into the flower area here. Um, okay, then we come into the garden with the two fairy dragons. So, I forgot that fairy dragons can communicate with each other telepathically. Remember, remember that, then you can kind of carry on the hijinks longer. Uh, I use them turning flowers and trying to like cover their breath weapon as if they were flower spores to try and trick the players but the players perceived that what was going on pretty quick and uh, but they were a lot of fun okay so there's the dragons now up to m13 first of all going through the laboratory and through the grassy knoll that was a lot of fun and of course here's the grassy knoll map where the walls disappear Another gorgeous map there. Okay, but once the players get into this secret room back here, room 13, they can get here either through this secret door or they can come through the roof above. So use caution if they come through the roof above, because potentially one player could descend into the room and everyone else could be up above. And that one player could face a little bit of trouble with this animated uh, bookshelf. Oh, and the animated bookshelf is large, but the maps are pretty tight, so I would play it as a medium creature. So I got that token there for the map, I'd, for the for the bookshelf. I'd use a medium creature for that. So uh, if only one player is down here, I might let the bookshelf smash through the ceiling. You can see there's already some holes there. Maybe it's done it before. Who knows? And maybe even weaken the floor and drop players down into the room below. Now we come to the uh, trophy room here. In every room, 
uh, when you're playing with first, even first level characters, kind of have an easy time with this. It's nice to have dials and levers to make the, the diff difficulty harder without, um, you know, like cheating, quote unquote. So if you add a couple more swords on the walls, then you could animate two. If it's going really easy for the party, two more could animate. And if it's not going easy for the party, no more would animate. Just a handy way to crank up the difficulty without being obvious that you're doing it. All right. Then we come to the basement. So down here in the basement, in this room, they'll find the closet who will attack them. That could be really quick and easy. It's only got seven hit points. It does have resistances, but with only seven hit points, if they go too fast and it's too easy, then after it dies, you could have one of the brazers flare up to life, have another one jump out and attack. And if that happens, or another one appear in the center of the circle, and if that happens, then the players might know to destroy the other brazers, make a little bit more dynamic fight there. All right, then the room with all the specimens. In that one, I replaced the specimens um, in there with like, or I gave the descriptions of all of them with just common descriptions. For example, a demonic frog, a feral chicken, an intelligent jellyfish. And then I let players make nature checks and um, arcana checks to identify a few of what these things are in reality. And in this room, uh, that combat with the hands and the combat with the uh, slot could be pretty easy. So you could, if it's going too easy, you could have them both attack at the same time. That would beef that up a little bit. So when the players have explored the whole mansion, they'll find all the books, and then they should be able to find the command word to get back out. When they get back out, they should come into this room and find, waiting for them here, the imp. So the imp could be waiting invisible and just ambush them. That's what I did. And it could be that the figurine turned into the imp. Uh, another option would be that the figurine spawned the imp. So the imp is there, but there's still a figurine. And that way, if you need to make it more difficult, you could have the figurine spawn more imps until it's destroyed. Another option is you could have, when the players arrive, the imp is not hiding, but he's just simply looking through the books in the library, and he pretends like he had nothing to do with Matreus's death. He could say that uh, the sage killed himself, or, or something else happened. And I'm sure the players will see through that pretty quick, but you could get a little bit of role-playing in there with a, a devious little imp before that happens. All right, that is um, the main areas of Candle Keep, um, a joy of experimental spaces. Now, luckily, I got a chance to play this in the virtual weekend and got to see some of the ideas that all the DMs shared. Great DMs there. It's a great community there. Um, if you're one of these DMs that has one of these ideas and you want to get credit with it, I didn't want to presume to put names by these, but if you'd like to, just uh, leave a note below. So... Um, one idea was to have the players collaborate to come up with the name of the village that they're helping at the front of the adventure. The nature of the trouble of the village, the name of the village's mage. So, you know, D&D players can come up with all sorts of cool, crazy stuff for that. Another idea was to add an extra mystery to the back of the puzzle books. Or you could do something in the puzzle books. Um, another idea was when the, when the flail is... Uh, gotten off of that chain library, it impels or compels the user to yell book club every time they attack with it. And lastly, the idea of the visible imp looking through the books saying it wasn't me when the party shows up. That wasn't, that was uh, from another virtual weekend DM. So there it is. That is the joy of extra dimensional spaces. It is just a really fun little adventure. And it took about mm, a little over three hours to explore it. So it's great for a single night. Um, I hope you had a great time running in this adventure, or you have a great time running in this adventure. And if you have any tips or funny stories, please share them in the comment comments below. Also, if you like this video, please click the like button below. Thank you very much.